All right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about forest shuffle strategies. And for this particular one, I'm going to be talking about the butterfly strategy. Now, the butterfly strategy is potentially one of the weakest strategies in the game. So if you are going to go the butterfly strategy, you're definitely going to want to use another strategy with this one. Potentially even more. Um, potentially three strategies with this one. So it's not necessarily recommended if you want to win with this one. This is probably not the best one to win with, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's impossible to win if you go this route. You just have to remember that you are utilizing this strategy as well as some of the other strategies, at least a little bit, right? Uh, to build the best forest you can. So let me talk about this particular strategy, the butterfly strategy. And the, the main card you're going to want with this particular strategy is going to be the Hedgehog. Because this is going to help big time if you manage to get a lot of butterflies. Okay, so the Hedgehog is going to get you two points for every butterfly you have. Meaning, even though you don't necessarily get all different, all five different species of butterflies, but you get a lot of the same species of butterflies. And you'll notice there's four of each of these, or at least... There should be almost four of all of the different species of butterflies. So you could potentially get a couple of doubles. This hedgehog is still going to give you a lot of points. Um, it's going to give you 10 points. If you have if you have five butterflies, it's going to give you 10 points. So if you have five butterflies, that's going to give you a lot of points on its own. But the hedgehog would give you 10 points in addition to that. If you can get more butterflies than that, obviously you can potentially get even more points. And if you can get another hedgehog, you could potentially get a lot of points that way as well by getting to basically getting double the points if you have multiple hedgehogs. But there's only three of them, so it's not an easy animal to get for sure. But this is obviously what you're going to need if you are going to go the butterfly strategy. This is the most important card to have for sure. And unfortunately, at least one of the hedgehogs do share space with a butterfly. So that is a down, that is a downer for sure. But if you do manage to get all of the five different species of butterflies, like for instance, this peacock butterfly, if you can get all five different species, then that's 20 points. But the cool thing is, while you get only 20 points for having five species of butterflies, if you have another set of butterflies, like let's say you have three more butterflies that are all different, then you're gonna get 20 for the first set and six for the second set. So you could still potentially score a few more points if you get multiple butterflies of the same species, okay? So, um, but yes, you're gonna want to obviously get all five of the different species of butterflies for sure. So, you know, here's the uh, purple uh, emperor. That's another species you're going to need, for instance. Um, Here's the large tortoise shell, for instance. So you're going to need that as well if you want to be serious and uh, get some get a lot of points with the uh, butterfly strategy. You're going to need this particular species as well. The silver washed uh, fritillary is another butterfly species you're going to need if you want to score the maximum amount of points. And the uh, Camberwell beauty butterfly is the fifth species that you're going to need. These are the five different species you'll need. And there's only five different there's only five different species. So while you want to get all five, unlike in other unlike the bats, which there's four species of bats, but you only need three species to really score anything, this one you have to have all five of them. So that's obviously much harder to pull off for sure. Um, but if you do go this route, there are some ways you can mitigate and make this strategy useful. And the best card here is the mole because the mole lets you play all of your cards in your hand that you can afford to play. And since butterflies are free to play, they're all free to play, You could, if you had five different species of butterflies in your hand after you played this, you could potentially play all five in one turn. That is powerful, okay? You could get your points for the butterfly all in one turn. If you had all five species and the mole in your hand, and obviously um, two other cards to discard. So you'd need the mole, you'd need two cards, 
and you'd need the five different species of butterflies, that would be a total of eight cards. And that means you could still have two cards in your hand after this. But yes, you could potentially, obviously, play a lot of butterflies. Now, you most likely wouldn't have all five in your hand if you had the mole, but you might have two or three. It's still a useful card in this strategy if you're going to go this route. The mole is is almost a must-have. This is a must-have. This is almost a must-have, okay? Now, there are still some other cards that would work well with this particular strategy. Um, obviously, since you're playing a lot of cards on top of trees here, the, um, the penny bun here, whenever you play a card atop a tree, you get to draw a card. So this mushroom is going to help with the butterfly strategy. It's going to help you draw cards. So this is another good card to have. Not necessary, but it's going to be a good card to have if you're going this route. Um, another good card that would be good for this strategy is the bullfinch, because you score two points for all of your insects if you have this bird. And all of your butterflies count as obviously insects. So if you had this exact equation right now, this bird here would give you two, four, six, eight, ten points, obviously, for that equation. So that's another good card to have here as well, is the bullfinch. If you can get a couple of these bullfinches in addition to your butterflies, even better, right? But remember, that's taking up more space on trees, of course. So obviously a good strategy that would work well with this strategy is a big forest strategy. That would work well with the butterfly strategy. In, and you know what? If you're playing the big, the big forest strategy, the butterfly strategy is probably the best strategy to go that route because you're going to be playing a lot of cards, expensive cards, if you're going the big forest route potentially. So you're going to want to play some free cards too. So this is obviously a good one potentially as well. Uh, in in addition to what you have, but it could be very powerful if you have a lot of butterflies, especially especially if you have more than five butterflies for sure. And then since we do have a couple of cards here that would work well with the strategy that are underneath trees, we've got three here. Obviously, another good card that would be potentially useful here is the wood ant, since it scores you two points for every card that's underneath a tree. So in this equation, this wood ant would score you six points. That's still good for a card that only costs one card to discard in order to play. That's still potentially good, especially if you can get a couple of these, and um, obviously a couple of those could potentially increase those odds for sure in your favor. But yes, that's another good card that would work well with the butterfly strategy. And that's pretty much everything here that would work well with the strategy. Like I said, this is good if you're playing another strategy. This is a side strategy that would work well if you're going like the big four strategy, for instance. This is a good side strategy for that. So it may not it may be the weakest link here, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's truly the weakest link. So um, I hope I hope this was helpful for you guys. Uh, let's I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be the last video in this series. Thank you guys for watching.